Hi everyone, thank you for being here with us today. My name is Sarah Radin and I'm the Global Head of Analytics and Measurement Platforms. As part of my day-to-day -day job, I spend time understanding marketers' needs when it comes to measurement. While needs might be different, everyone I talk to agrees analytics is a key priority in digital transformation. In particular, analytics gives you the essential insights you need to be ready for what's next. This is why last week we announced the new Google Analytics, known as Google Analytics 4. We think we've built the best version of Analytics yet, and it represents the future of our platform. Google Analytics 4 properties are the evolution of App Plus Web properties, which we announced last year. The new experience is completely cross-platform, meaning that everything we're going to talk about today applies both to apps and to websites. Today, we'll spend some time covering the most exciting features on Google Analytics 4 and give you a sneak peek into what's coming down the pike in the future. I'm joined today by Russ Ketchum, who I'll let introduce himself. Thanks, Sarah. I'm really excited to be here today. Uh, as you said, I'm Russ Ketchum. I lead uh, product management for Google Analytics. And I can't wait to share with you and the audience all of uh, the excited things that we have planned for Google Analytics. All right. So you and I have had the pleasure of working together on Analytics for a few years now. And I know we're both really excited about this new version. So for those of people who are not familiar with what Google Analytics 4 is going to offer them, can you give us a high level overview of why you're so excited about it and what the new experience uh, is like compared to the Google Analytics they know and love today? Absolutely. I think it's fair to say that we've reimagined almost everything when it comes to Google Analytics 4. Uh, and hopefully, by doing so, we'll have made it that much more uh, uh, intuitive for our customers to understand uh, how their customers are engaging with them, particularly today when things seem to be changing more rapidly than ever. There's probably three areas I'd highlight the most in terms of how the new Google Analytics 4 is different. The first is we've really based the product around machine learning and making it easy for our customers to take action based on uh, the insights that the machine learning is capable of producing. And so uh, that is the first. The second is we've centered the entire experience around the customer journey. Uh, and this is true as the customers interacting across a business, not just from a single device or a single platform, but truly across multiple devices and multiple platforms. And most importantly, I think we've designed the platform to be durable so that it, by investing in Google Analytics, our customers really are investing in a product that will last them for the long term. So it feels like machine learning comes up in almost every conversation that we have with partners and advertisers. I know it came up in a conversation I had this morning. So can you help me understand how the machine learning capabilities in Google Analytics 4 will help marketers get better and faster insights? Yeah, machine learning is one of those phrases that can be a little bit ethereal. And so maybe the best way to talk about it is uh, from a couple quick examples. So the first is with a feature that we're calling automated insights. And here we have machine learning that's able to look across all of our primary and secondary dimensions for all of the most important metrics. And it's looking for significant changes to those values for each of those metrics combinations. And when it finds them, it surfaces it right there on the home screen so that a customer doesn't have to dig and look across all of this data to find you know, interesting or unexpected changes. It's right there front and center. Another example is it allows us to bring an entirely new class of data to Google Analytics. And these are our predicted metrics. The first two that we're introducing are predicted churn and predicted conversion. And these, as they sound, are trying to predict user behavior before it actually happens. And you can use these signals both with audiences and with conversions so that you can take action in response to them, either to uh, if, if it's likely that a customer is going to churn. You can take action to hopefully stop that before it happens. Or if a customer is about to do something highly desirable, you can perhaps reach out to them using an audience list. Um, so those sound like pretty awesome capabilities. I know when I, before I joined Google, I was a big Google Analytics user, and I spent a long time digging into data to try to figure out what was driving anomalies and what the anomalies were. So very interesting to be able to detect those on. Uh, in an automated fashion, and it sounds like we're also making headway and predicting the future. So a pretty cool capability from an analytics yeah, standpoint. Yeah. So I know sometimes uh, predictions are great and really powerful, but I also talk to marketers who want to find their own insights based on their unique customer knowledge. So how does someone bring their special sauce to the 
Google Analytics for property type. So when we started our App Plus Web beta last year, we really erred on the side of less as being more with reporting. So Google Analytics and Universal Analytics has something like 150 reports that are accessible directly from the left nav. And with Google Analytics 4, we wanted to, to simplify that overall experience. And as we've gone through the beta, we've collected more than 150, I would say, line item pieces of feedback about the reporting. In some areas, we got really strong signals that we did well. In other areas, there were opportunities to improve. And so what we've done with the overall reporting experience is we've organized it primarily around a customer lifecycle. And so here we drew heavy inspiration from the game-specific reporting that we introduced earlier this year. And so that, uh, coupled with some changes we've made to the left nav itself to make the most important reports easier to access, we really do think it will enable our customers to get to their own insights that much more quickly, discover the types of information they need more quickly without the same level of search that maybe they would have had to do if they were participating in the beta. Yeah, that's great. I think one of the most exciting parts for me about the new reporting structure is how easy it is for marketers to dig into the data along the entire customer journey. And for many customers, that journey ends with an online purchase. And I know we've seen in the past few months an acceleration in e-commerce adoption and digital transformation. And I would say in the last six months for both of us, this has probably come up in every partner and advertiser conversation we've had together. So how have we responded to the growing demand for e-commerce solutions in Google Analytics? And how are we enabling marketers to move quickly online and make critical decisions about online sales? So uh, e-commerce has always been a large investment area for Google Analytics. That was particularly true in Universal Analytics and now continues to be true with Google Analytics 4. Uh, I think now that type of investment is just more important than ever. And so with Google Analytics 4, we have the opportunity to be more expressive in terms of the data that's being collected. And this allows our customers to be more specific, take advantage of increased categories, and really describe the transactions that are happening uh, with a level of, of specificity and granularity that they couldn't do with Universal Analytics. Um, at the same time though, we wanna make the e-commerce reporting that much more approachable and so we've really taken a step back there as well as we were looking at the customer lifecycle reporting overall and tried to simplify as much as we can just to reduce some of that you know, uh, intimidation factor that maybe someone who's relatively new to the e-commerce space might experience when they come to the set of reports for the first time. So hopefully those two things together, the, the fact that we're making it more powerful while also simplifying the reporting experience will go a long way for customers uh, who are both new to the e-commerce space and are well-established. Yeah, and I think one of the things I love about Google Analytics is it can really grow alongside your business. So we have small businesses, medium businesses, large businesses, uh, and many businesses who've come along on the journey with us and grown their business alongside us. So how are you thinking about analytics growing alongside uh, businesses going forward and meeting future customer needs? So uh, I talked about this a little bit at the beginning, but we wanted to make sure that the Google Analytics 4 property was going to be something that lasts so that the investment makes sense over the long run for our customers. If you compare that to Universal Analytics, which really grew up in the age of the desktop web, the way that users interact with businesses today is very different. There's countless platforms, devices, uh, all of these additional challenges. And so we've responded to that in two key ways. The first is by having a more descriptive event model, which makes it easy for marketers to literally measure what's happening rather than trying to focus on page views and sessions. The other is we've made the platform radically more scalable because as users engage with the business across all of these touch points, some of those interactions are really sticky and that can create a lot of data. And the Google Analytics 4 property is there to catch all that so that marketers are able to make sense of these longer term engagements. Yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And one of the things you touched on in your answer was uh, the end user. And I know protecting user privacy is really important both for Google, but also for all the businesses that we work with uh, as a product team. So can you help me understand how we're making it easy for businesses to protect user privacy in Google Analytics? End user privacy is, I think, something that we all have top of mind at this point. And with the Google Analytics 4 property, we're committed to making sure that our customers have the controls that they need uh, 
to take user privacy seriously, and we're making sure that those uh, sets of controls are easy to use. And so you're gonna see this in a number of places across Google Analytics 4. You'll see it with the consent APIs, which uh, show themselves when you're doing your instrumentation using gtag.js. You'll see them in our next generation of ads personalization controls, where you can tune these things by geography and event type. Or another big place you'll see them is with our data deletion controls. We've made these much more surgical, so customers can delete only the exact data that they need to, and at the same time, we're gonna provide a live preview of those changes because deleting data can always be scary. And this way, uh, before any of those changes go into effect permanently, customers can make sure that they're happy with the result before locking in those changes. So there's a wide range of places where end user privacy surfaces. Yeah, those are really exciting changes. And I think, uh, I love that we're still helping businesses to gain the valuable insights that they need to run their business from an analytics standpoint while protecting user privacy in a really thoughtful and thorough way. So we've talked about what's available today, but I know there's a whole lot to come on the roadmap. So I wanted to switch gears a little bit and talk about the future. So what can marketers expect in the next few months and quarters uh, when we think about this new property type? I mean, there's a lot of great things on the roadmap to be fair, but if I had to really focus on one theme, the one I would choose is customization. And so customization was more like a feature that existed in Universal Analytics where there was a customization section and there uh, you could build custom reports. With the approach we've taken for the new Google Analytics 4 property type, customization will, will be pervasive across the experience. It'll allow our customers to actually curate all of their reporting to meet the specific needs of their businesses. And so while I'm really excited about the lifecycle reporting, I think there's an opportunity to think of that just as a jumping off point. And when customization capabilities come online, our customers are going to be able to tune that experience that much more to meet their specific needs. I think it's a pretty big upgrade from the type of reporting capabilities that Google Analytics has had to this point. I know we touched uh, briefly on the ads platform, and I think one of the things that is most powerful about Google Analytics is our deep integrations with other Google products as well. And so um, I know for me personally, one of the things I'm most excited about is a deeper and broader integration with YouTube and Google Analytics 4, uh, and specifically YouTube EBC is coming online. What is available today and what can users uh, look forward to as they think about integrations with other Google products? So um, I would say the set of ads integrations that exist today uh, start from a similar place of what's in Universal Analytics. So you have your, your conversion tracking and you have your abil uh, ability to, to create audiences. Um, so that's the starting point. But as we look forward, uh, in addition to uh, this focus on consistency that I mentioned, we're also focused on making these integrations that much more comprehensive. And so comprehensive can mean a couple different things. The first you alluded to with uh, YouTube BBCs here, we're talking about uh, making the channel coverage of our ads integrations that much more comprehensive in Google Analytics 4. So that's, that's one example. Another is we wanna be that much more comprehensive in terms of the products that we integrate with. And that includes making the Google marketing platform set of products available for all of our customers, even those outside of our Google Analytics 360 tier. So both the, the channel coverage comprehensiveness, the product coverage comprehensiveness, all of this against this underlying drive towards consistency should really uh, supercharge our ads integrations going forward. And one of the things you mentioned is Google Analytics 360. And I know you and I have spent a lot of time reimagining what an enterprise offering for Google Analytics 4 should look like in the future. So maybe you can give people a quick preview on some of the exciting things coming down the roadmap for the enterprise users of the 360 product. So this is something, as you know, uh, that we're actively testing now. So there is a version of an enterprise solution for the Google Analytics 4 property. Uh, we're testing it with customers right now. And we should be making it available, uh, generally available, relatively soon here. Um, and once it is, uh, in addition to the SLAs that uh, customers expect of an enterprise product, we're also going to see um, higher limits, increased performance, and uh, additional features, things like real-time and intraday uh, export to BigQuery, and a whole bunch more. So there's a lot of exciting things 
not quite ready to talk about them all in detail today, but the enterprise version will be here soon. All right, well, you sold me on Google Analytics 4 and all the exciting features, and hopefully we have sold all of you. So assuming yes, how can people get started with the new property type today? Yeah, it, it's really easy. It, it's always been easy to get started with Google Analytics, and hopefully with Google Analytics 4, it's even easier. So if you're a user of Universal Analytics already, you can just jump into the admin section for your property, and you'll find an area right there that makes it very easy to get started on your upgrade. Or if you're starting fresh with Google Analytics, simply create a new account. That'll create a Google Analytics 4 property for you. You add the measurement code to the header on every page. And as soon as you do, the data will start flowing and you're able to dive in uh, and start trying out for yourself all these great possibilities and capabilities. So thank you so much, Russ, for being here and for sharing more on Google Analytics. Yeah, thanks so much for having me and for uh, giving me this opportunity to share all the exciting things that are coming with Google Analytics 4. Yeah, so thanks to all of you for tuning in. It was great to be able to spend time with you virtually and talk about Google Analytics with you today. 